On this Memorial Day, over 175,000 Americans are fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan. We are a nation at war. But for more than 3,800 men and women, the war has already ended in the most tragic possible way. Many have been laid to rest just a couple of miles from here in our capital's most sacred monument to bravery and sacrifice, Arlington. Here lie more than 290,000 Americans who have brought honor to their country. And ironically, this all began when Americans turned against each other, the Civil War. 1861, a political crisis became a raging monster, the bloodiest conflict in American history. By war's end, over 16,000 soldiers had been buried at Arlington, many without recognition or ceremony in shallow graves with crude wooden markers. Inside of the capital, Arlington was a fearsome place. It was called the Field of the dead. Great efforts were made after the war to make Arlington worthy of those laid to rest there. May 30th became Decoration Day, and it was promised that no neglect nor ravages of time will testify that we have forgotten as a people the cost of a free and undivided republic. Over time, that promise was kept through the Spanish-American War World Wars I and II, Korea and Vietnam, Arlington became a spacious and beautiful hollowed ground. It is now 624 acres sheltering over quarter of a million lovingly tended graves. Each Memorial Day, an army battalion places a flag next to every single headstone. Here lies the heroes of a grateful nation, together with their closest loved ones, side by side. They come from the Army and Navy, the Marines, the Air Force, and Coast Guard. Regardless of their rank or fame, Arlington shelters them all. But over 4,700 buried can be identified only by the tomb of the unknown soldier forever anonymous. They are tended day and night by an elite honor guard. Every president since Lincoln has come to Arlington, and two are laid to rest here, William Howard Taft and John F. Kennedy, saluted by the eternal flame. Today, over two dozen funerals are held here daily. Rifle salutes frequently echo over the hills of Arlington. Nine eleven. A strange and completely unexpected new war begins within the site of Arlington and 42 Pentagon victims would be buried here, a stone's throw from where they died. Section 60, Arlington's somber frontier, where the line of fresh graves advances daily. Many of those killed in Iraq and Afghanistan some are too new for gravestones, but freshly adorned with fond mementos. There are constant visitors in all kinds of weather. Parents, children, friends, wives, and sweethearts. Beth and Michael's son, Nicholas, was killed in Afghanistan in 2005. They're here almost every weekend. We're able to spend time with our son. You know, this is where you can come and, and 
feel closest to your child. I mean, it, it's a weird thing now because you come here to celebrate birthdays and you come here for the anniversary of when they died. It's out of respect for what he's done. You know, it's the least we could do. connection that we've made with some of the other families is, is the best healing for us. It's not that we don't get comfort when we come here. It's hard for us to come here and every week see the added graves no, and true. know that someone has just gotten the news and what kind of journey they're going to have to start. And it's, it's help.